You alter your grip. You work on your swing. You agonize about whether to use a nine iron or a pitching wedge. But few golfers give a moment's thought to the ball they're chasing helplessly down the fairway, until they can't find it, of course. And that's where it comes mastering, is trying to hit that club, the right perfect sweet spot, with that ball on the right distance. Curiously, a golfer's club barely touches the ball. A tournament can last four days. During that time, the competitors may hit the ball up to 300 times. But their clubs will only make actual contact with the ball for a total of just one-tenth of a second. It's the ball that's doing all the work. So forget your bent elbow and yips and shanks, stop admiring your new clubs and spare a thought for the ingenious modern golf ball. Titleist makes over 350 million golf balls a year. We check every single ball. To the untrained eye, golf balls all look the same. White, round, dimply. But golf balls vary enormously and are precision pieces of engineering. How they're made can radically affect how they perform. The story begins with what's inside the ball. These days, a solid piece of rubberized plastic, the core. This is where the substance of the core is decided upon, the mixing conveyor. Here, a worker assembles a batch of raw ingredients that will eventually become the heart of a golf ball. These bags contain what's called crystalline polybutamine, It's the main ingredient of the core. And how much you use determines how the ball will behave. Titleist makes two main types of core, hard and soft. The different ingredients are easy to spot because like in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, the ingredients are color coded but these are not sweet. We'll make about 3,000 golf balls out of that. The raw mixture goes into a giant cooker. And a few minutes later, it comes out looking like this. They call it the hot sheet. Cut and cooled, the hot sheet now looks a bit like Play-Doh. Barely pausing for breath, workers ship the hot sheet off to the next part of the production process. Here, the sheeting is sliced into strips. The extruder chops the strips into pellets. When cooked in another oven, the pellets shrink and compress. The compression provides density, and density provides power. The core density of an average golf ball is equal to 40 kilograms of steel squeezed into a space just four centimeters in diameter. The core is like a coiled spring, a powerhouse of pent-up energy the engine that drives the ball. But raw power isn't everything. Getting distance out of a golf ball is one thing, but ball control is another, and getting a ball to behave itself involves more than just the core. The secret is on the surface. The ball's external housing is a kind of two-piece egg cup that holds the core. Think of it as a containment chamber for a nuclear reactor.
The cup is made of a durable plastic called polyurethane. Chip-resistant household paint contains the same ingredient. After cooking, the golf balls are beginning to look like golf balls. But they still lack what is perhaps a golf ball's most distinctive feature, dimples. On a golf ball, they're vital. Because dimples make spin. And spin makes the ball fly true. Up to 500 dimples adorn each and every ball. This is a moulding oven. Half-assembled golf balls are pushed up into hot dimple moulds. Freshly dimple, the fledgling balls are sucked along high-speed vacuum tubes towards their ultimate destination. The finishing processes that will make them the choice of champions. Aerodynamic properties are so important to the ball's final performance that they go through two polishing processes in an effort to further reduce drag. First, they must face the automatic ball buffer. This is when the ball becomes a real golf ball. This is the uh, excess flash of the ball that you see right here. It goes all the way around the ball. And after it's gone through the machine, you can see the, fine, the finish line right there of the golf ball. And once it's sprayed and painted, it all blends in. The second polishing comes when the balls are blasted by high-speed jets of water. Finally, after the balls have been branded, robotic sprayers apply a coat of aerodynamic paint. so difficult to hit. I mean, you, could, you can see it, it doesn't move, and then when you swing at it and hit it, it doesn't always go straight. So the next time you can't find your ball, just think what an incredible piece of engineering you've just lost.